When you're ready to titrate, add a few drops of the indicator solution. In this case, we're using phenolthaline. It's colorless in an acidic solution and pinkish in color once the solution is basic. It's important to adjust the height of the burette prior to the placement of the flask underneath it. What I've done here actually is problematic as I may dislodge a drop from the tip of the burette and alter my titration volume. It is equally important, though not shown in this video, that you record the volume of your burette prior to beginning your titration. You will see that throughout the titration the flask is swirled as much as possible. This is to ensure that the titrant and the analyte mix and react completely. It is also important to occasionally stop the titration and rinse down the sides of the flask. The addition of titrant to the flask will splatter. This can lead to analyte or titrant being left on the sides of the flask and not reacting with the rest of the solution. Feel free to use as much DI water as necessary to rinse down the sides of the flask. DI water will not impact any of these titrations as they are all done in aqueous media. As the titration proceeds, you'll begin to see the appearance of the color of the final solution. In this case, a pink color. It will occasionally appear and disappear early on in the titration. Depending on the intensity of the color and the background environment, it may be beneficial to add something white, such as a paper towel, underneath your flask to enhance the contrast of color so that you can see the endpoint more clearly. As you near the end of the titration, the color will become more persistent and take longer to disappear. This is a good warning that you're nearing the endpoint and you should begin to add solution a little bit more slowly, and prepare to add it dropwise if necessary. As you near the end point, begin adding the titrant dropwise. This may be a couple of drops a second, or even to the point of doing something called a half drop. A half drop is where a droplet is formed on the tip of the burette and rinsed from the tip into the flask with a stream of DI water. As you near the end point, ensure that you have rinsed down the sides of the flask completely. Any droplets of titrant or analyte on the sides of the flask will change the end point significantly. The end point for this titration is achieved when a pink color remains permanently in solution. Here it is achieved by adding a final half drop to the solution and swirling it. When the color does not disappear, this is an indication that the end point has been reached. The end point for this titration does not need to be a very dark pink solution. As you will see here, we will overshoot the titration and go to a very bright and dark pink. It only takes a few excess drops of titrant to overshoot the endpoint and get the dark pink color. A key to accuracy in titration analyses is to make sure that you hit the same endpoint color each time. As you can see, the solution can become much more pink than the desired color at the endpoint. Your endpoint should ideally be a color much lighter than this one.